Um, we're going to start today with a presentation from Sebastian Abud, who is um, so kind to join us today and share his knowledge. Um, Sebastian's an illustrator and designer based in BC, and very excited to have him. And I'm going to pass it over you to you, uh, Sebastian, if you wanted to go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, thanks for thanks for inviting me to do this. Uh, I'm excited to, to to yeah to connect with all of you and to share a bit of uh, uh, my journey as a designer and an illustrator. And uh, and yeah, so I have some uh, have some slides just to give you a bit of a background on uh, on my story and then my work. And I think we're uh, slated to do a Q and A after that. Is that is that right? Cool. Okay. Great. So I'll just yeah I'll just launch right into it. Um, I guess yeah. Feel free though to ask questions during if it if it makes sense. Uh, no need to wait till the end. If uh, if that's easier. All right. Let's keep going here. Okay. Am I good? You see see my screen? Great. Yeah. Okay. Um. Great. So uh, hi everyone again. Uh, my name is Sebastian Abood, and I'm a, a freelance illustrator and designer uh, based in. Uh, based in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island, BC. Um, I work with clients kind of all over the place on a, on a, on a wide range of design and illustration projects. Um, I work on art projects, so I um, I guess I'm an artist, but I feel kind of weird about, uh, about calling myself an artist. I don't know why, but um, I feel like sometimes art comes with all this extra baggage and all these kind of expectations, which uh, um, which uh, which I don't know if I'm, if I'm, if I'm qualified to kind of to kind of be an artist in the traditional sense but I do make art and public art and stuff like that so I guess I am um, I'm an RGD um, I uh, been an RGD for a couple of years now prior to that I was uh, a CGD uh, with uh, graphic designers of Can of Canada um, but between us RGD is a much better organization um, I used to be a professor. I taught for seven years here. Sorry, I'm looking over this way because I have all of you on the screen. So if it's weird, the slides are here. Um, I taught uh, here in uh, here in Nanaimo at uh, VIU, uh, graphic design and illustration courses, uh, up until about uh, the pandemic when sort of everything kind of changed with with uh, with education in the classroom and everybody going online. And I decided just to double down and uh, and just be a full-time freelance illustrator and designer and etc uh, i'm a dad i'm an aging skateboarder very okay musician um, other stuff like that so a bit about my journey um i sort of learned about graphic design and illustration through skateboarding through logos through uh, board graphics and through you know titles on videos and all that kind of stuff and that led me to a uh, uh, undergraduate degree in new media at the university of lethbridge which was a very kind of general program, so like a little bit of 3D, a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of design, a little bit of um, uh, filmmaking, and all this kind of stuff. So it was a very kind of um, you know nothing, nothing too specialized, uh, nothing too uh, too too kind of specific. But it did introduce me to graphic design and um, and, and and illustration and things like that. So uh, after that, I. Um, I got a job as a uh, corporate graphic designer, as an in-house graphic designer at an uh, engineering and project management firm. Uh, and at this, at this point, I was still in Calgary, and I was uh, I asked for a transfer to Vancouver because Vancouver is better than Calgary. And uh, and it worked out, and they accepted it. And I uh, got so sick of designing for eight and a half by elevens and trifle brochures and business cards and all that kind of stuff that uh, one night I flipped a coin on my uh, on the uh, on the encouragement of my girlfriend now wife and she's like I'm so tired of hearing you complain about your job just do something about it already and I'm sitting here like okay like yeah, I, mean, I don't know I'm, if I'm ready to freelance I don't know I'm just kind of you know I don't have any clients and this and this and this and sure enough I flipped a coin and I quit my job the next day I had about uh, two thousand dollars in my savings account to hopefully ride, uh, ride a bit of that wave, and then I spent the next, you know, I want to say six months to a year, jumping small job to small job, scouring Craigslist, scouring, um, you know, I don't think really LinkedIn was really a thing back then as much as it is now, but 
Um, I just slowly built up my career and slowly built up my client list. And I also started drawing every day. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't one of those kids that was kind of going to hold up in your, in your, in your attic or in your basement or something like always drawing, always being creative. That wasn't me. I discovered art and illustration kind of later in life. And, but, you know, once I did sort of start, start illustrating, it really kind of grabbed me and I just, uh, I just fell in love with creating and, 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 you know, kind of um, just having more of a hand in, in the projects uh, that, that I wanted to, to work on and the style I was, I was, um, you know, I was kind of developing my style. I was developing my voice as an illustrator. I was developing the kind of projects I wanted to work on. And, um, and then slowly, slowly, slowly illustration projects started to, uh, started to come my way and I got more and more commissions and I built up my portfolio, whereas now I'm much more of an illustrator uh, as compared to a designer. Um, I saw a job for a teacher and I just applied very randomly. Basically, I, I kind of spent a weekend figuring out what my teaching philosophy was and how I would approach the classroom and all that kind of stuff. And I was kind of wanted to teach. I was, uh, would, you know, sort of mentor people at the end of the my undergraduate degree. And, kind of, you know, I liked leading projects. I liked helping out. And, and so I felt like I was pretty well equipped to be a teacher. And I got the job and I was a sessional teacher for a while. So meaning you are hired essentially for four month contracts um, at a time, you know, you're hired in the fall for four months and you, um, and then again in the spring you get a contract. And it was great and I loved it and it was part time and it gave me that steady income and it allowed me to kind of build my freelance uh, freelance career. And eventually they said, you know, there's, there's a faculty job if you want it, but you have to go back and get your master's. So I did an MA in graphic design, a two year program from the University of Hertfordshire in the UK. And that was online, uh, sort of pre-pandemic around that, around that stage. And then, and then the pandemic happened. And also we also had kids, I had twins during that period. They're four now. And so my whole life just like, just, just turned, turned all around. And I decided I didn't want to teach anymore because I was, tired of babysitting students because I was babysitting babies and now I'm a freelance full-time freelance illustrator and designer and I'm turning 40 this year which has got me thinking about what am I going to do next uh, I don't know so that's the question marks uh, hopefully I'll figure it out somewhat soon but freelancing is pretty fun so I'm going to keep doing it for uh, for now pretty much the kind of projects I work on uh, these days 80% illustration, 20% design. I have a few, uh, I have one regular client that I do packaging design for a cannabis company based in the US. And then uh, my net. Uh, Alyssa, I think you're muted right now. Sorry. It's all good. And then the rest is graphic design. And I also illustrate for, sorry, the illustration part is I illustrate every month for Highlights Magazine, which is a kid's magazine, which we grew up on. I do little doodles in the pages and it's super fun and it's consistent. And I've been doing um, probably, I want to say issue 45 or so right now, consecutive. Uh, so a couple consistent clients that uh, are regular and I get paid every month. So it, it allows me to have that, that steady income, uh, even though it's never really steady because you never know when it's going to end. But um, yeah, super happy with the breakdown right now. And um, part of the reason I put this up here is because I think when you're in um, when you're in school, you know, you start to think about: Do I want to be a generalist or do I want to be a specialist? Do I want to be someone who um, you know is really well versed in one thing, or do I want to kind of do a little bit, a little design, a little illustration? And and I'm definitely a generalist. I do a lot of uh, a lot of kind of different things. I have a few different styles of illustration, some graphic design, some branding, some logos and stuff like that. So um, yeah, and I like it. I like being a generalist, but um, there's a lot of advantages to being a specialist as well. So um, I'll be curious to know during the uh, Q&A uh, portion of this, uh, where you guys are kind of, uh, where you kind of fitting on the scale and whether or not you know yet. Um, I sure didn't know in school. It wasn't until I was probably 10 years into my career until I figured out that you know, naturally, I'm I'm just I'm a generalist, so that's what uh, that's that's what I do. These are some of the clients uh, I've worked with uh, over the past uh, ten years as a 
10, 15, 15 years as a, as a designer and illustrator, primary, primarily illustration. Um, so big, uh, big ones um, and, and small ones. And, um, you know, the, the big ones pay good, the small ones pay bad. And that's basically what it is. But uh, a lot of times you have a lot more creative control over uh, over the small ones. And I still do projects which don't pay much, and I, but are interesting. And then I do ones that are pay really well, but they're not interesting at all. So it's all, my whole thing is I love jumping around. I love to uh, wear a lot of hats. I love to uh, to just kind of experiment and figure it out and, you know, and kind of, kind of go that way. The idea of, of working on the same project for a long period of time uh, just would make me sad. Um, so I'll show you some work now. This is a, um, a skateboard I did with the with Canada Skateboard, which is the uh, nonprofit um, representing Canada uh, at the Olympics for skateboarding. And this is an inclusion board. And our uh, our thinking with this was to uh, to sort of represent an illustration that skateboarding is for anyone and everyone, regardless of age or gender or any other factors that there's a there's a place for everyone in skateboarding so that was the thinking uh, with this work and uh you know this is totally you know pinch me moment i uh like i said i grew up skateboarding I still skateboard now uh it's a huge moment to have my work on a board and to and to have an artist series with canada skateboard was a, was a real big one these are some stickers i made for uh, figma and fig jam uh just a random commission they found me um i want to say on dribble maybe found some work that I'd done on Dribble, and commissioned a set of stickers for back to school. And they were great to work with and uh, absolutely no complaints. And I'm told that they're fairly well received within the products. So that's pretty cool. And this is kind of this bubble lettering style that I've been developing that's everywhere now. I don't want to say I had a hand in, in, in it, but boy, it's everywhere now. Um, yeah. These are some banners uh, I did for City of Nanaimo. I was commissioned to, to do two banners um, that were uh, displayed all around town. I actually can look out the window and see them right now, which is pretty special. But um, yeah, more of a kind of art project. I'm part of this, I'm part of the City of Nanaimo's uh, design roster. So essentially we're, uh, there's about 15 of us. So whenever an art project comes up, they uh, sort of get someone on the list to work for it, or to work, uh, to work on it. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty. They pretty much let me do whatever I want. So it's nice seeing your work around town. Uh, this is my regular client. This is uh, I do uh, packaging and design and illustration and the whole gamut of things for Moo Cannabis, which is a direct consumer um, cannabis brand in the U.S. And uh, whenever they send me the photo on the left, I photos like the one on the left, I get super nervous. And um, I try to ignore that, you know, the decisions that I make as a designer and illustrator um, are used and implemented across thousands of packaging all across the uh, all across the organization. You know, I pick the color, I pick the typography. I, they're so they're so easy to work with. I mean, they're a cannabis brand. I mean, if they were difficult to work with, something would be disconnected. So, uh, so yeah, so this is a, this one of my regular clients where I do packaging and stuff and there's so many products and there's so many updates and they're changing ingredients all the time. So it's not interesting work anymore, but it pays really well and everybody's really nice. They're all best based in the U S and they found, I was recommended, um, from, I done a project, did a couple projects with Upwork with, uh, with like the Upwork creative team. And one of the guys there recommended me to the founder. So so that was a straight referral which um which is pretty great i got to make a puzzle uh this is a company uh called good fit based out of denver and they saw a piece of work that i posted online and they said hey we want to make a puzzle it's like great let's make a puzzle so i got paid uh i got paid a royalty i think i got paid a dollar a puzzle or something nobody's getting rich off puzzles that's uh, uh that's that's for sure but uh, they sent me a puzzle and pretty cool to have your work like this. And they send you nice photos. You get nice photos for your portfolio. This is just definitely a portfolio piece. You no, know, like this is not a not a bill payer. It's just cool to have a puzzle. And they did really well with the packaging. 
and you know, they sample the colors for the packaging and uh, it's fun and it's weird and it's, uh, it's great. Yeah. So it just goes to show drawing weird stuff sometimes can get you projects. Uh, these are utility boxes that I uh, got to do around uh, Nanaimo as well. Another project where they let me do whatever I want. And so I was like walking around these places where the utility boxes are. And the most like brown and gray and like beige and dead grass. And I was like, well, I am going to bring some color to, to, to those just those um, those areas of town. And so I did. And again, they let me do whatever I want. They had no complaints, no feedback, no edits. So I just drew a bunch of weird characters and um, yeah, made something fun. And it hasn't been, hasn't been, uh, hasn't been vandalized too yeah, bad. Yeah, I can tell you about Yes. Uh, this is a project for Google. Um, found me online. Uh, amazing. Pinch me moment. Uh, I drew, you know, tons of illustrations for this Google mixtape project, which was super fun and it was really chill and it was hourly and, uh, and it paid really well by the end of it. But people at those, or those kinds of organizations, in my experience, they work so hard. They work like 80 hours a week. So if you want to work a lot, go work at Google. Um, but everybody was always seems stressed out and kind of like, totally overworked so but I didn't because I was a freelancer because that was that's what I was running I think this is one of the last ones I'm going to show but this is a commission from a UK based agency uh, to do some illustrations for Smashing Plates which is a, a Greek restaurant a uh, new Greek restaurant chain and, uh, and yeah I did some illustrations and I also did a, a Greek inspired typeface so that was the first time I'd done a typeface for a project and so they could use it as a brand. I did two of them actually. So they could use two, two uh, brand typefaces to make all their marketing materials and things uh, sort of consistent and, and interesting and obviously Greek themed because it's Greek food. So it kind of just makes sense like that. Uh, I get asked this quite a bit. How do I get new projects? And I'm kind of lucky that I just get projects by just simply sharing my work. Uh, I've been, since I've started illustrating, I've been posting everything, everything I do. Uh, on on Instagram dribble uh, and a bit more lately LinkedIn and Behance I can't seem to get any traction on but I keep posting it on there because why the hell not um, and you know I've been fortunate again to have a career just based on the things that I make for fun and then share on the internet and I learned a long time ago that clients don't care uh, pers prospective clients don't care why you made something it doesn't matter if it was for a client project or you did it for fun or you did it for your your mom or your dog or something but um it doesn't matter as long as you made it and as long as it's out there people will find it and it's about i think being consistent and i've always been experimenting my whole career i feel like i've just like I'm always experimenting because i enjoy what i do and it uh it's it's led to some interesting projects uh, other than that, I get uh, referred and I get sometimes re repeat clients, um, less so repeat clients with illustration because um, you know, I usually come in for a specific campaign or like a specific, very specific project that needs kind of my style, my aesthetic. And uh, and then I say networking, I don't really network. I mean, I'm, I'm involved in the RGD. I lead the, um, I lead the illustrators uh, virtual community for, for RGD and, uh, so I don't know if that's really networking, but uh, based in Nanaimo, I don't, uh, yeah, I go to design thinkers sometimes, but that's about it. And then cold outreach is something I want to do more of. I want to be, uh, I want to be more proactive with the kinds of projects I get. So try to, uh, try to be more proactive with, with that is a kind of a goal of, uh, a goal of mine for, for when things slow down a bit. Yeah. This is some of the software and things I use on a daily basis. Pretty straightforward. I'm not going to read them out, but uh, there's nothing too, yeah, it's nothing too crazy about my process. I feel like I'm not, I like to use computers um, minimally as, as little as I, as, I, as I can. So I think a lot of kind of intentionally pared down the amount of stuff I, I use because I just, 
like to focus on, you know, creating and, uh, business stuff kind of isn't so fun. Thankfully, I, uh, I get enough requests that it keeps me busy. So um, I'm still waiting for it to dry up. Someday it'll just dry up and I'll have to get another job or a real job or something. But um, yeah, still going strong right now. Um, so pros and cons of, of freelancing, according to me, is yeah, definitely lifestyle. Choose your own hours. Uh, the pay uh, is usually better uh, than obviously than like a salary job. And there's more uh, there's more room for uh, fluctuating, especially when you get into illustration. You can uh, you can start charging people for usage, which is cool, and you can you know possibly get royalties and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, and you you're your own you're your own boss, which means uh, it's great because you have control over your entire world, uh, which is also not great because you have to do everything so you have to do marketing you have to do business development you have to do sales all that kind of stuff so uh, but the range of projects is amazing if you like to work on a lot of different things and you know if you're if you're constantly uh, constantly wanting to uh, to to kind of develop that type of practice uh, again lifestyle can 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 be terrible also some people thrive on consistency. Some people need to be told when to show up and when things are due. And all. I mean, obviously I'm told when things are due, but if you're not motivated, if you're not, um, if you're not sort of, you don't, you don't have that drive, uh, you know, freelancing probably isn't for you. And then, yeah, the uncertainty stinks of, of the ups and downs, peaks and valleys. I mean, I, I think a very, very few, very few freelancers, I would say probably five to seven to ten percent actually have like a consistent income consistent amount of projects where the rest of us are kind of riding this wave all the time and it can be isolating because you're by yourself you're always running working by yourself and then taxes this is the worst time of the year april 2nd not today specifically but um taxes are due april 25th so i'm in tax mode right now and it's terrible and every april, april is terrible uh it's not that bad but it's not fun, but you have to do it because that's, you don't want the government on your back. Uh, some quick advice, uh, experiment, especially for, for those, everyone in school. School is a time to take chances, make some weird stuff. Don't pick the same fonts because you always pick them. You know, pick some weird stuff, make some, make some interesting work, you know, push, push yourself. So now's the time. It's harder to push yourself when you get into client work. Um, but, but now, now is really the time to discover and to develop your skills and to, to figure out what you like and you don't like. And, you know, if, well, I, for example, experimented with watercolors and I don't like watercolors, but at least I know because I tried. So, um, so use that opportunity in your projects, in your schooling to, to try some weird stuff because weird stuff is in right now. Um, and, and weird stuff is going to lead you on an interesting path. Um, be patient. Yeah, it takes a while to land uh, that job or it takes a while to land that opportunity. You know, not everybody works. I usually work out of a basement in my house, or a basement, out of a bedroom in my house, which is very, not very cool. Uh, I'm currently in uh, my friend's office who, who has a startup, so he let me use a desk. But um, I just say that because there's this kind of preconception that every like, cool designer works in like a, a brick office with like foosball table and everyone's sipping espresso and it's just the reality of it is that you know most of us are, are just kind of you know just regular people living regular lives working in regular um regular rooms in our house or something you know i think um yeah so so be patient if uh, if you know if the if the if the job doesn't come right away, it takes time. It takes time to develop a portfolio. Uh, don't, uh, yeah, just, just, just be patient. And then, yeah, make, make work. I mean, there's no shortcuts in this career. Nobody's born with it. You know, I can teach a monkey how to make graphic design. Um, you have to make a lot of stuff to make good stuff. And that's, that's basically what it is. And there's no shortcuts. And if anybody tries to sell you a shortcut, tell them they're full of shit. Uh, and don't compare yourself to others. I think even me, like I'm, I'm guilty of it. You see people that are landing projects on Instagram and you're like, man, I wish I could get that project. Why does that guy get that project? I can draw a smiley face. Uh, and especially when you're in school, 
especially when you're looking around and you know somebody is more advanced than you are or somebody's typography is outstanding and your typography is just, just okay um that people those people just work harder that's simply what it is i don't i don't believe in in waiting sitting around like waiting for inspiration to strike and i don't believe that people are kind of born with more creativity they just work harder at it so um yeah be kind and also be kind to yourself uh, but also be yourself i think there's enough work for everyone uh don't look at uh you know especially in school when you're getting a new job whatever um there is graphic design and illustration work for everyone out there i'm sure you walk around you go sit at some restaurant you look at the menu and you're like, holy man this is terrible i could do a much better job of this and you should and you should go pitch yourself pitch your services uh, and but there's a lot of job for just for everyone out there. And then lastly, don't stress about AI. Everyone's talking about AI right now, and it's a bit of a mess in terms of uh, in terms of uh, just how uncertain things are about what it means for uh, the the creative careers. I I'm not worried about it. It's cool. There's a lot of cool tools you can use, which helps speed up our process. I was reading something about how. It's really going to set those who actually lean into AI, those illustrators or designers who actually lean into the technologies, not in terms of producing a finished image, but in terms of, you know, producing sketches or generating ideas or um, any all that kind of stuff uh, throughout your process to kind of enhance that part of it. Um, those are the designers and illustrators that are going to stand out and that are going to that are going to uh, are going to kind of flourish in this in this in this AI future, whatever that means. So, but I don't think it's going to replace us, obviously. They're going to always going to need humans. It'll replace some people for sure, but um, those are the people on Fiverr or on Upwork selling $5 logos. Not us and not you guys who actually go to school and then know this stuff, design illustration. That's it. I'm sorry that was long. If that was long, I'm tired of talking. Um, this is my email address. Um, I regularly, well, for a while, I offered portfolio chats on, on Instagram. I would schedule them every Friday, uh, 9.30 a.m., where I just kind of, uh, you know, just chat with one person a week and talk about your work and talk about um, the industry, your clients, and all that kind of stuff. So if that's something that might interest you, uh, feel free to email me, and I'll let you know uh, when, when that's coming up. And I don't call it a review. I just call it a chat because uh, I don't want there to, be, there to be any kind of big expectation, but it's helpful to talk to people. Uh, it's always helpful to talk to, to people that are that are working in the career or that are, that are established or uh, whatever, even myself. So yeah, so thanks very much. Um, yeah.